Remember that when you are recording a real drum set, a real percussion, there is... Yo, what is up guys, it's Vodzu here and welcome to Beat Grinding in Reaper, uh, a series of tutorial videos in which you will learn not only how to make beats, but how to make beats exactly in Reaper. Today we're gonna be talking about reverb sense and sense in general. Before you start watching, remember that you won't be able to see those videos anywhere else. Why? Because I make them. So please leave a subscribe with all the notifications by clicking this bell thing uh, and leave some thumbs up and let's enjoy the video. Follow me on Instagram, vodzu underscore beats, the link is in the description right below. Beat grinding in reports. So, what is a sand? We've made lots of sands uh, as we were making the template for the beat grinding in reaper series, which you can watch somewhere here or here, I don't know. To put it simple, Ascent is a track which has an effect plugged in as a VST. In this case, it is a reverb. For example, drum reverb. And we've got the epic verb here. And we send all of the tracks we want, we want to have in this reverb to this particular track. And now an explanation. But why don't we just take the snare track, take the effects uh, and add some epic verb right here or the old school verb. It works, right? It has reverb. Well, you can do it if you have enough processing power, but okay, okay, no offense guys. Look at it like this. A one reverb plugin is like a room like this room. When I clap in this room, it sounds in a particular way. And for example, this reverb right here, the drum reverb, uh, is a small room, really small room where those drums could be recorded. And we put all of these drums in this room. Another example, vocal reverb. Uh, there is a vocal preset right here and I'm sending all of my vocals, if I have any, to this particular reverb, which is set to sound best with vocals. And I have four reverbs right here. The drum, the vocal, the plate and bright plate reverb. And I look at this like I have four different rooms, four different environments. If you set different reverbs on clap, on snare, hats, on all of these ear candies, cymbals, this will sound like a mess. And this will not only sound like a mess, but it will eat the hell of your CPU. Because for these drums, we have eight tracks, we would have to load eight reverbs for each track. And we don't need to do this. Let me show you how to use the sense. For this purpose, we are moving to our mixer, which I have on my separate second screen. I go to this bar right here. I press the right button uh, and I press show multiple rows on the tracks when size permits. And I have two rows. I don't have to scroll between all of this mixer. And now it will just be easier to navigate uh, around all of this. So let's start from the snare. We take the snare track, we have the routing icon right here. We take it and we drag and drop it. As you can see, there is this uh, plug uh, under our cursor and we place it in the drum reverb. Now we have this slider right here, uh, which will mix the portion of the signal to the reverb. This is just the reverb volume for this particular track, for the snare. Okay. Now let's send the hats to this the same reverb, because we want all of the drums in the drum reverb. My way of setting the volume of the reverb is like uh, go down until you stop hearing it and if you stop hearing it, just move it a little bit up. Maybe a little bit quieter. You have to experiment with it yourself. And about the kick, I do not recommend sending the whole kick 
to the drum reverb. Why? Because kick is in the low end. It has a lot of low end. Kick uh, is, has bass and has all other frequencies, the higher frequencies, usually. So that's what will happen if you put a kick into a drum reverb. Oh yeah. Not good. So we delete it. In most of the cases, I am not sending the kick to the drum reverb. It's simpler. But if you want to, you can split some frequencies and send it only the higher frequencies uh, to the drum send, drum reverb send. But this is not a topic for this episode. And this drum reverb placed those drums in a room. Let's have a listen. And let's have a listen without the drum reverb. Everything is closer, like it's closer to us as we're listening to it. There is like no space and it sounds much more raw. Remember that when you are recording a real drum set, a real percussion, it is already in a certain room. When you have samples, which are just raw samples, they need to be placed in a room. I hope you understand what I mean. That's why we send all of those drums to the drum reverb send. So we use sense to maintain a clear mix because we don't want to have 12 different reverbs on all the uh, percussive sounds. We use sense because uh, we don't need to use that much of a CPU and we can use it for other stuff and it's just more efficient. It saves you time. You don't need to load new plugins. You don't need to wait for them to load. You don't need to set everything up separately. You have just this one send, this one room where you send all of your drum sounds. I hope I helped you just a little bit uh, and if I did so please hit the subscribe button with all the notifications in order not to miss new episodes. Leave some thumbs up and some comments in the comment section down below. Question time! And the question for you guys, what is your favorite reverb? It can be a plugin, it can be a device like I have this reverb right here, you don't, you probably don't see it, but it's under my screen, so I can't show it to you. Let me know in the comment section down below. My name is Dominic, you've been watching Vodzu Beats, and keep the good vibes alive. <laughs>